Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, first class of uh, critical thinking uh, with uh, our program which is called University uh, Culture. So this is for our uh, students uh, in general in the university. So what is this uh, course about? Uh, it's about uh, thinking. Uh, as uh, we can uh, get a definition from a favorite book I really like and I really recommend uh, this book uh, for anyone who is interested in developing their critical thinking uh, better. So what is it? It's actually an art of thinking about thinking while we are thinking to make thinking better. So there's a lot of thinking here. But basically it became, uh, it is uh, a skill to learn how to become your own critic. So in other words, it's not necessarily criticizing others. It doesn't mean necessarily that I point at uh, other people's uh, thoughts and find inconsistencies and fallacies. It involves my own th thinking as well. So it is an art of uh, improving thinking in all people, including ourselves. And how to do that? It involves three phases, uh, analysis, evaluation, and improvement uh, of our thinking. First, we have to analyze and understand what we really mean and what we really think when we say something and think something by that, or when we hear a thought. So we have to first understand what it means. And then we evaluate it, whether it is consistent, uh, true, with uh, real facts, uh, whether it's supported uh, with facts and sound or not. And then if we find problems in that thinking, we try to improve that with uh, more truth involved in it and with more consistency and clarity uh, included so that it can be understood better and uh, received better. Uh, and it's not just a logical uh, uh, exercise, let's say. I mean, so far I was trying to give you a logical definition of uh, critical thinking, but it involves an ethical thinking, which involves fair-minded uh, thinking. Oops, I'm sorry. Fair-minded thinking, which means that we are also, uh, we care about the just uh, points. So we want our thinking be just and fair uh, to everybody. That way, it also in, uh, involves avoiding uh, deceptive thinking. And most of the time, it's self-deceptive uh, thinking because uh, the problem is not that uh, difficult to find uh, deception in others' thoughts when we are not convinced, but it is really hard to find uh, deception in our own thinking when we really deceive ourselves. Or when we deceive others, maybe we know that, when we lie that. But when we deceive ourselves, we are not aware of it. And that's the most uh, difficult part to solve. But critical thinking helps or aims to help actually that problem. So uh, as it is written in the book, uh, written, I mean, edited by Richard uh, Paul and Linda Elder, uh, an anonymous uh, saying is, tells us that to understand the human mind means to understand self-deception. So if we can understand that, then we can really uh, solve many problems uh, in philosophy. You might say in psychology, maybe uh, we can understand the self-deception mechanisms as defense mechanisms, then we can you know, uh, go forward and be better. Overall, in the end, it is to avoid fallacies. And today uh, in our class, uh, I try to come to that and by uh, giving us an example to you know, take a pause and think about this. Maybe you have seen in recent days this, uh, especially in social media, whenever there's a social justice problem, people uh, tend to blacken their um, profiles in many uh, um, you know, social media circumstances. So you can choose the example you want to uh, choose uh, as a problem of justice where we find an, or we hear an argument and then we hear discussions uh, about uh, an argument which is uh, maybe expressed in, a, in three words, in a really short statement, but it, it involves many layers, many presuppositions, and it leads to, it hints at uh, many conclusions and to lead us further. So I have chosen today an example uh, which is uh, recently, you know, uh, worldwide uh, well heard and uh, and it must be heard, and we need to hear as well. It's Black Lives Matter. Uh, three words, one big statement, 
And when we hear it, we understand what it means, actually. Most of us understand, I guess, uh, as long as we know English. And I want, I want to you know, see and hear and discuss maybe the presuppositions and the conclusions which might follow that. Not that difficult, yet uh, we hear a lot of buts, uh, which might confuse us. Uh, but is a you know great cause sometimes, uh, which helps uh, to add some complicated issues that we you know tend to dismiss. Uh, so in uh, thought we use but, but sometimes in you know problems of social justice and in social movements they tend to be blocking the thought. What do I mean? I will see that, and they tend to confuse us, lead us to fallacies, and which doesn't let us to see. What is the truth involved in this statement? Let's say here it's Black Lives Matter. And uh, I mean, it is a sound and true argument, and I, I, will, tra uh, I will claim that uh, today. And uh, with no but. But, 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 or in Turkey sometimes we say but, 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 you know, it's all excuses and excuses to, uh, you know, avoid uh, to hear actually the claim because hearing it uh, involves. Uh, hearing some problems in our own thinking. That's usually the defense mechanism. But I leave it that uh, to psychologists, which, whom we have a lot in this uh, university, which is a great thing. Okay, let's continue with uh, uh, some details, examples of the buts. <laughs> okay, two common ones. I mean, there can be many, but I have uh, chosen two of them so that we can you know, save our time today. Probably you heard that black lives matter, but all lives matter. So what's wrong with that? We'll come to that. I mean, there's nothing wrong, but we'll come to the but. Two, but they shouldn't commit violence. They shouldn't loot the stores. Uh, of course, again, uh, nothing wrong with that too. So these two sentences in their own are also uh, maybe right if it is, you know, uh, if I am uh, saying black lives matter because there is some violence and crime committed against black lives. Uh, I'm also against uh, violence and police brutality there in that argument. So if there is violence used in response, I have uh, probably consistently right to say uh, they shouldn't, uh, protesters shouldn't commit violence too, if that's my point, to have integrity. If you are somebody defending violence, the case is different. But here I will take the stance as you know, being against violence. Yet, uh, while these two statements are true, and the first statement, black lives matter, is true, if I accept that, and usually the people who use but, they accept that too. But these sentences do not follow each other. And indeed they follow. They you know, they can be uh, working together. When I add the but, it becomes like as if they're opposing to each other. Do they uh, oppose to each other? Okay, well, here uh, I think we can test whether they oppose and confuse us or not. Because when I say, uh, when I hear black lives matter, and then, well, black lives matter, but all lives matter, then I ask, or Imagine this is a dialogue between two uh, people. One says black lives matter, the other one says, well, but all lives matter, uh, or what they shouldn't uh, commit violence. Then I can ask, well, hence, therefore. So what is the conclusion? So with this but, where are we going to? Do they mean, I mean, when you say what is the conclusion, hence we go back to the uh, first premise, so black lives don't matter or shouldn't matter if all lives matter, because that sounds like it. Well, the person probably, I'm imagining some you know, exercises, dialogues we have heard around. Uh, well, no, of course they do, but again, all lives matter, I say. But then I will ask, what good is this but for in such critical or uh, social uh, thinking in, about social uh, issues? Well, then we can go a little bit further. 
We can ask uh, the place of this bot in logical and maybe critical thinking as well. No surprise, because uh, I was looking for you know, logical terms which can also be symbolized, like and or uh, therefore. Uh, these are symbols that we use in symbolic logic. Uh, there's not an easy one for bot, and uh, now I understand why, because it doesn't help us to think uh, logically in fluency, with fluency, let's say. But we have a lot of and, if, then, therefore. Uh, these clauses help us to go further with thinking, to reach some conclusion that can help us uh, in actions and decisions, basically. So I think, uh, unlike and and if, then, for example, or therefore, uh, but uh, can be a blocking clause which does not let us move forward and get, it actually makes us uh, get stuck uh, in our own thinking, hence it serves polishes thinking most of the time. Okay, uh, fallacies, let's try to understand what they mean. It comes from the Latin term fallere, uh, uh, it means deceive, to think deceptively, let's say. And usually uh, we use this term in manipulative uh, thinking. We, when we find manipulative or rhetorical ideas, we say, well, this, this is a fallacy. Fallacies usually uh, appeal to uh, prejudices and stereotypes, knowingly or not knowingly. Again, self-deception is usually involved. For example, but they shouldn't commit uh, uh, violence. Who are they? This they is a very big stereotype, generalization, and prejudices. So you assume that if one person belongs to a certain uh, group, that they are tend to be uh, more inclined to violence or aggressive behavior. So uh, that's prejudice and stereotyping, right? So what do they help uh, or you know, what do they do in conclusion? They don't give us clarity. Instead, they confuse us, confuse our thinking, and it diverts us from the main issue, the very main issue, which was Black Lives Matter, or fact, in this example, and uh, the truth that is involved in it. So we're kind of covering the truth that it is kind of opening up for everybody to see it was hidden maybe or granted not seen enough. So we're kind of covering it. And in Turkish we have this uh, word uh, in Arabic too, cehalet, which means covering actually the truth. So it is not just being uh, unaware innocently of the thing, but it is an active, uh, you know, uh, act of uh, covering the truth in its own. So hakikat, truth, means uh, actually the opposite, of, like opening, letting the truth appear. So if we are confusing it with these buts, then we are actually being the uh, ignorance. Uh, ignorance means jehalet. Uh, in Turkish and Arabic, we use this term a lot. OK, uh, now uh, there are four, for example, I mean, uh, the book that I was uh, referring to in the beginning uh, gives us a list of 44 dirty tricks uh, for manipulative thinkers. Like, if you want to be a manipulative thinker, you can use these tricks to confuse people. So there are many ways, not just buts. There are many ways uh, you can do that. I just chose like few of them here. Uh, there are many appeals, like appeal to fear, appeal to authority, experience, etc., uh, etc. Et appeal to fear, briefly, uh, let's say uh, about uh, the policy of uh, migrants. Do we accept uh, migrants into our country or not? Well, yes, uh, of course, uh, we would like to have hospitality, but they will uh, threaten our lives, they will take our jobs, etc., etc. Again, with a but. So what are we doing here? It has nothing to do with the facts, but we appeal to f a feeling, emotion, fear, so it influences our uh, uh, emotions rather than the facts. So we can have good policies uh, of migration and integrity, etc. We can do many things to, you know, secure uh, jobs or help uh, security, uh, etc., etc. You can hear that, um, uh, you know, about let's say uh, democracy as well. Like, should we, you know? Uh, should we have democracy or not? Well, of course, we would like to have democracy, but security comes first, so we can kind of uh, suspend some rights, human rights, etc. Well, again, why are we uh, you know, putting security here? It's to appeal to fear. And such fallacy uh, you know, 
confuses us and it diverts us from thinking, well, they can be together. Actually, if there is democracy, then there is security. So it blocks us to see that, from seeing that. So uh, these types of thinking, fallacies, uh, they involve many uh, tricks. So for example, appeal to fear can involve also uh, creating a false dilemma, like democracy or security, as if they are opposing to each other. So black lives or all lives, as if these are, so we you know, divide ourselves to uh, you know, camps and debate clubs or whatever, and then discuss against each other. Well, that's a false dilemma to begin with. So we have to be careful. Demonizing their side, sanitize yours. If you are like arguing with somebody and you are thinking you're enemies, that's again a, a wrong scene to begin with. An argument shouldn't be like that uh, between enemies. So you have to uh, see the points in each uh, thought so you can have better thinking, not mine or you know hers or his. So uh, uh, call for perfection, and you know it's usually go. It usually goes with uh, raise nothing but objections. You probably know that uh, we sometimes tend to be like that. Or among our friends, you say something. Let's do that. It's something productive, and you are kind of uh, trying to be positive about something. Uh, I don't know. Let's have some trees. Uh, more. Let's plant some trees in the garden of the university. And somebody is just raising, but uh, raising nothing but objection. Character comes in. Well, if we want, uh, you know, a more green uh, environment, well, uh, this neighborhood is uh, full of uh, buildings, so there should be all trees everywhere in the neighborhood. So, therefore, what shouldn't we plant in the tree? You know, some trees that they, maybe we have some area in the garden. No or not. So it doesn't, again, help the conclusion to move forward. So usually, uh, such an appeal uh, to objections uh, calls also for perfection. So it's an appeal to perfection, in other words. Uh, again, we look like perfectionists, but indeed we are, uh, again, blocking this one little step that we can take. So usually, uh, we demand impossible conditions. So if you, some, if you hear somebody say, well, black lives matter, they are you know, now a subject exposed to extreme uh, violence and the police brutality, et cetera, et cetera. So you come up, well, there's police brutality in all countries, everywhere. It's a big problem to begin with. But if we want that correction, we want it should be everywhere. Otherwise, I'm not helping or I'm not supporting this point. Well, since it's uh, not possible to correct all the countries, so we're kind of nihilist here, uh, you know, pessimistic, maybe, when we call perfection, not because we see some realistic uh, changes and we really want that too. If that's the case, we will see them again as, uh, as and sentences. So yes, those lives matter, and uh, X people's lives matter to uh, Z people's lives matter too. So let's uh, grow this movement. So it could be rather me too, rather than, or us too, rather than but, uh, right? So I see the problem mostly with but, as you can see. Uh, now, uh, perfectionism, uh, fear, objections, false dilemmas, etc., etc. So if you're interested, you can uh, check the book or just observe thinking in general to find more uh, examples for tricks. Uh, so how to heal this but effect, uh, let's say, because um, it has an effect, uh, as I tried to describe. Well, we can try simplicity and clarity, uh, like in the analysis, uh, it helps. Just uh, take the sentence as it is, first of all, not try to you know, uh, divert it with some extra clauses. But if we need to make some connections further, because we want to add some details that are you know, left maybe invisible in the main uh, claim, because they are also big generalizations, and that's the, you know, uh, that's the kind of nature of uh, you know, uh, slogans most of the time. Fair enough, we can tr try and uh, to connect uh, not but to stop, right? So maybe then we can reach a clear, consistent, maybe comprehensive, that's the part. We want to add more uh, truth to it, then we want to be comprehensive, uh, you know, dismissed or, you know, disregarded peoples or identities. 
uh, done, we can uh, do better, I think, with and because we can uh, add many premises to Black Life Matter, and then we can have some conclusions with if then arguments with universal because maybe the idea that we want universals most of the time and that's not universal but uh, black lives matter and then we want all lives matter which is a more universal statement uh, just because black lives matter is not a universal doesn't mean it is opposing to the universal um, black lives matter so it can actually uh, build the way to that so if we are making an inductive uh, argument uh, we can see that later uh, how to heal that argument but here i have uh, my inspiration source when i saw this uh, uh, recently it really gave me the you know idea how to deal with this uh, fallacy so uh, a clear and simple and correct thinking from a child so she says uh, we said black lives matter we never said only black lives matter we know all lives matter we just need your help with black lives matter for black lives are in danger it's just because there is right now a case a fact happening uh, which is historical and lauded and etc etc so it is needed to say uh, Okay, I guess I don't have to explain that. It is all clear on itself, very self-explanatory. Another one, to heal uh, the violence, but. But they shouldn't commit violence. Correct, fair enough. But uh, how to avoid the but? Now I'm using but to uh, how to uh, heal this confusing effect without ignoring uh, the problem of violence uh, necessarily and without falling into false dilemma again, as if like uh, you either defend violence or uh, you know, uh, be against, uh, if you defend Black Lives Matter, you are defending violence, or so violence or black lives, so, or uh, anti-black lives. You have to choose between, those. again, false dilemma. Now, here is, uh, and that's usually, I mean, that's maybe, uh, uh, you know, big word, we use uh, white as a stereotype example, but, uh, uh, stereotype uh, again but that's why I think it's uh, good not to use white it's rather white privilege uh, so you specify and you know that it's not all whites uh, thinking that way but if you are tend to be thinking with your privilege without seeing the you know others positions as this privilege then you can keep saying well it's horrible that an innocent black man was killed so everybody can see that uh, uh, problem uh, it it's uh, already you know true he, it was not fair and just and you know horrible that he was killed but destroying property has to stop again we can try something else if we have to use the but uh, well, again I saw this uh, in one of the protesters uh, placards uh, in you know TV uh, recently so you can uh, try saying well it's horrible that property is being destroyed but killing innocent black men has to stop so if you gotta use but uh, what are you pri prioritizing let's see what is your priority here if all this violence is happening people are being killed and property is being destroyed then maybe if it is really a dilemma which one are you choosing here uh, we don't want any of them since uh, but here is somehow uh, working like an end but uh, to conclude uh, we are more emphasizing that you know killing uh, people black people here has to stop and we acknowledge that is also horrible that uh, properties are being destroyed now uh, I want to add one more. This is not from any uh, protest scenes examples, but uh, just uh, my uh, exercise uh, after hearing all the you know discussions and uh, protest scenes on this matter. Uh, if Black Lives Matter, then all lives will be safe. So that is uh, to say that when we are uh, sensitive and uh, protective about uh, people who are disprivileged in this. Uh, uh, seen, let's say, then it secures everybody. So there is more security 
if uh, black lives matter for everybody then we can say you know it's for Latinos too, I mean, I don't know, Middle Eastern people, everybody in all countries, all ethnic identities who are oppressed and not secure enough, uh, we can say that it serves as a premise to this universal all lives matter rather than blocking one, so why but in between? Uh, I will stop here. And uh, thank you for listening uh, to our class today. I hope it will uh, help our thinking better and we can approach every argument with that uh, maybe care uh, not just careful thinking logically but ethical care as well okay have a nice day mm -hmm.